so another thing with you know each town you know has its own little flavor and flair mm-hmm. and then uh so the gyms which i guess we've kind of established would be kind of like the cornerstone ride of each one kind of thing yeah because i don't think um, you can get rid of those like i think you have to have a gym in every town like that's oh yeah one of the totally. only things that um, stayed consistent but the what made the gyms great was each one was a kind of puzzle in itself mm-hmm. so how would we oh. how would we replicate that as as either part of the ride or maybe part of the entrance into the ride yeah that's like, a really I feel like cool that, thing that was a pretty solid part of it was like you don't just walk in and just fight the dude you know you in between having to fight his cronies you also have to like hit certain switches in a certain pattern or you know go on these moving walkways or or, you know all these all these weird little one directional slides (laughs) that'd be so cool if that was like instead of waiting through this long line i mean you still have to wait on line outside the gym but once you're in there's an additional challenge you have to do before you get to the ride I think that'd yeah. be really cool because it would it would slow people down, like maybe yeah, slow exactly. your line down and a little bit. You wouldn't even realize you're in a line because you're having to defeat this certain aspect of of the line. <laughs> you have yeah. to beat the line. That's that is really cool. But there are so many fun puzzles. There's some annoying ones, but a lot of them are really fun. Like when you're on the little ice things and you have to like figure out what pattern you're going to move your your character in. Part of it would change because humans can walk in any direction, whereas in the early Pokemon games, you know, you've only got up, down, left, and right. So that yeah. might have to be edited in some way. Um, but it would be yeah. really cool to have some kind of physical challenge um, as an element there, like almost like a, on Survivor, like when they have the little challenge parts. Sometimes it's just a sliding puzzle, and then you have to climb up like a rope net thing. Like it's not always the most complex thing, but it'd be kind of fun if there was something to, to replicate that within the, oh, the sure. actual park. I like mm-hmm. that idea a lot. That's really cool. And honestly, there don't have to be traditional like uh, roller coasters. You know, there's not roller coasters in the Pokemon games that I can think of. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it, it, it's still I, there, I think there actually was one gym that I kind of, or I'm making that up. I don't no, remember. No, uh, I think you're right. I wanted to say I think there's at least <laughs> one, but I can't place it. I can't think if that's a different DS game. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I don't know. I'm, I have something in the back of my head, but I really have no idea what it is. But either yeah. way, I mean, yeah, and honestly, so, like, I grew up going to, like, I grew up in South Florida, and I've, many times have I gone to Disney World and Universal and, you know, Islands of Adventure and Busch Gardens, all these places, and mm-hmm. you know, I was always cool with, you know, like, Busch Gardens was fun, you know, I've been to Spog, that's fun, Islands of Adventure is fun, but I always absolutely adored Disney World mm-hmm. and, and just Universal studios and it's because it wasn't about the rides it was about just how you felt being inside of it and mm-hmm. kind of being sort of consumed by the entire you know you you basically live in an entirely different reality for the time period that you're there um and it's not just like a quest to go on all these different rides yeah um so and i feel like one would lend itself more to being like that rather than um you know just like here's here's a spider-man roller coaster <laughs> Or, you know, yeah, like, here's a totally right. roller coaster, and here's a here's a tentacool roller coaster. I mean, and of course you would have them, uh, right? But it's about it the experience. Focus and... on them, yeah, yeah. But less like the entire adventure of being there while you're there. I um, love that. I think those ha- just have a longer, or a, a better longevity mm-hmm. and culture too. You know, like that's why I think you know, with like the Harry Potter um, world, you know, that thing's gonna be around forever. I think because Again, it's less about the rides and more like, look, you're being transported into an entirely different reality right now. Yeah. And you know, it's, uh, every time I go to Disney World, I immediately turn into a six-year-old. And you know, <laughs> me and my mom go, uh, whenever we go, we both turn into six-year-olds. And we're just like, come on, let's go on the <laughs> You know, and we're just like, excited to do all this stupid stuff that, yeah. uh, you know, doesn't really matter in the grand mm-hmm. scheme of things. Mm-hmm. But it just feels really great because you can just let everything else go that's in your life and just, you know you know put yourself into that that mindset um and so that's that's how i really want pokemon world to be totally when you get to reconnect with something from your childhood it's like it's like you're a child again and it just kind of feels really nice you're like oh yeah things are simple here and i think that's why i go to so many toy stores and stuff like i rarely buy things but i just like being in a toy store because when i was a kid it was like dopamine like oh totally out out the wazoo it was out of control yeah and that's i mean that's why i've chosen this as my life path you know yeah totally <laughs> like, totally you know what put myself in uh, you know i'm at my 
job more than I'm anywhere else. So I put <laughs> myself in a position where I'm in a place that makes me any less than, you know, just very happy. Right. <laughs> so I, I feel like I'm a pretty overall happy, well-adjusted person because I'm constantly surrounded by things that make me happy and make other people happy. And that's how more people should do that, I think. Absolutely. So if you have Pokemon, you know, in your little Pokeballs on your belt, you've got these like these virtual Pokemon that you transferred from your game and you're bringing them with you. There's no physical representation of them, which which is fine and normal. And in the Pokemon series, people don't just walk around with their Pokemon very often. They're usually mm-hmm. in their little containers. But if this is, you know, a, a, the theme park is probably going to have some kind of animatronics. And then it's also going to have maybe, you know, a slide that looks like Tropius or some, you know, yeah. slides like yeah. playgrounds that are kind of built to look like Pokemon. So I, is that jarring to have the virtual representation, the animatronic moving one? And then you've also got like a big, you know, human dressed up like a Pikachu that you can like shake hands with or whatever. And then there's also the stationary, like statuesque kind of ones. Is that weird, or should we like make those all more uniform? No, I don't think so. I mean, there are, like actually literally in the games there are like those Poke fans yeah. who are like dudes in Pokemon costumes. True. And stuff. Like it. So it would as long as you don't treat them as like that guy in a Pikachu costume is actually a Pikachu. Like he's not trying to fool you into thinking that he's a Pikachu. It's like that's an awesome giant Pikachu costume, and you. You know, you you do the same thing you take pictures with it. It'll give you an autograph or whatever, but it's mm-hmm. not the same entity as a thing that you're also trying to catch. Okay, um, I got you. So yeah, in your, I think that's fair. Your Facebook picture, you didn't think that was a real Pik- Pikachu that you're hugging or standing oh. next to. Wait, are you saying that wasn't a real Pikachu? I thought. It, oh, <laughs> that's what I was Crap. trying to avoid. Okay, well, <laughs> I guess the magic's gone anyway. No. Okay, so so yeah, you're right. I mean, I guess the main demographic of this is not going to think that pokemon is real because it's just a video game like it's a thing that they've always experienced as either a cartoon or a video game it's but then again like little kids think that mickey mouse like that's the real mickey mouse over there like and this yeah this is the real ariel that i'm getting breakfast with (laughs) yeah for sure uh (laughs) yes those breakfasts are great oh yeah uh uh, the it's just all about the immersion i guess Mm -hmm. and you know, the, the littlest of kids who are still believing that stuff, like, honestly, they're probably barely playing the the game of the park, True. so to speak, and they're right. just taking it all in. So I don't think it's going to be like, no, 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 son, that is not like, the real Pikachu we're trying to find. That's just a guy in a costume. Like, they're just going to let the kid go hug it and take a picture and, yeah. you know, move on with their lives. That's uh, so true. And, and if Pokemon were real, like, within the Pokemon world, I'm sure their playgrounds, instead of looking like a big turtle like it looks like a venusaur like i'm sure that they theme things within the pokemon world to be pokemon themed (laughs) which is a little meta or reverse meta or something but yeah okay so i'm okay with that having pokemon themed playground within the pokemon world that that fit that checks out that's okay cool well i don't feel weird then um (laughs) i was just kind of grappling with that a little bit because i just want i mean i just want pokemon to be real you know what i mean and so I think oh, animatronics could make huge leaps forward in that or, you know, uh, like pro- projections or uh, whatever, you know, technological things you can do. It'd be cool yeah. if they were maybe more unified, but it would also just be an amazing thing to just go to this park and see Pokemon, you know, all over the place. Yeah, totally. I mean, I wish it would be possible. Like, You look back, I don't know if you ever watched the Yu-Gi-Oh cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> they go to like Kaiba's like big battle island or whatever. Uh-huh. And then they all have those giant CGI, um, they're not CGI, but those like giant hologram mm-hmm. uh, representations, basically. Yeah, yeah totally. And, and even then, they know it's not even real, obviously, because they're cards, but there's still a weird emotional attachment to all the characters and everything, even though they're just, you know, computer generated right replicas of, of the illustrations on the card kind of thing um, that's really cool but yeah it'd be cool if you can like have that happen mm-hmm. with your pokemon so you still see this like battle in some sort of augmented reality in yeah front of you. And um i think as um oh god what was i gonna say you know like um virtual reality and i think augmented mm-hmm. reality could start to kind of fuse together so Let's say mm-hmm. in you know ten, twelve years or whatever, you have a Google Glass type of thing uh, that's 
sort of giving you the experience of virtual reality. I know it might be jarring because yeah. you can still see around the edges of your glasses, but that's a technical detail. But it'd be yeah. really cool if it's almost like a virtual reality thing. So you brought your Pokemon with you from your games, and then they're just like walking behind you, or you can hold out a Pokeball and like see something like get sucked into it. I think that'd be yeah, really totally. sweet. <laughs> Honestly, if there's one thing I could wish about this if this became a reality. Mm-hmm. It would be that. Yeah. <laughs> like, just that's like just full on 100% immersion. Call yeah. it a day. We're good. It Everything would... else is just like extra. But if we can <laughs> actually walk around and directly interact with, you know, these augmented reality Pokemon, yeah. That's, that's, that's a dream come true. Yeah. I think that the best route for this might just be a virtual reality theme park because then people can access it from anywhere. You don't have to drag your parents with you if they're like going to be sitting there suffering, and you're like, "No, come on, let me trade your Pokemon so you can go on this ride." And they're like, "No, I don't want to go on this dang ride." <laughs> um, but if it was just a virtual reality thing, so you just get your headset, um, you know, virtual reality is still kind of growing. Like, we don't really know how you're going to be able to control it, or like if it's going to how it's going to feel like you're walking if you keep bumping into the wall. But if they, let's say, you've got an omnidirectional uh, treadmill type thing, so you can walk in any direction. And you can just walk around this this big world, this big amusement park, mm-hmm. and then you know interact with the Pokemon and all of that kind of thing. Oh gosh! But then it doesn't even have to be an amusement park anymore, does it? It can just be the next Pokemon game. <laughs> Dang! <laughs> what have we done? Which which actually that's really awesome though. That would be truly amazing yeah. if you could see everything oh, okay. from your perspective instead of you know your your camera floating in the sky. Like if you think about that, we've been playing Pokemon games for so long, but we've always played as a camera following around this one kid (laughs) like that's not you you're not seeing from their perspective yeah i don't know but that'd be that would just be an amazing virtual reality experience it'd be pretty sweet Mm -hmm. cool um okay so i know this is kind of all over the place but i'm just i'm so pumped about this i've uh, pokemon's the longest running you know franchise that i've i've loved the most for sure so that's something i'm excited to talk about (laughs) yeah I, I love what we've what we've done so far. It's it's not necessarily your traditional amusement park, but I think it would be absolutely amusing and uh fans of the franchise would probably be flocking from all over cuz it seems like such a cool place. Like I really want to go. Oh, it just seems awesome. I guess yep. I should just start working on uh figuring out how to make virtual reality games cuz that's <laughs> that's what I learned from this is I want virtual reality to be really, really, really good. Oh, for sure. Like a yeah. friend of mine has a, a, a an HTC Vive, uh-huh. and we'll go over to his place and even just like the, you know the relatively few games that exist for it now. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's impressive, man. It's pretty dang cool, and it's it's not perfect, but well, when it is perfect, it's gonna be <laughs> pretty pretty crazy. Yep. Like I'm also almost terrified for that world we'll live in where it's like you don't even have to go to your work anymore like if you have an office job you can walk around your virtual office instead yeah. and like use a virtual printer to print out your virtual paper and you just like, <laughs> do something stupid like throw it and that's how you email it and just, yeah that would be cool though weird time to live in right but, you know I, I i that's what i'm assuming the world's going to be in 10 20 years yeah and, I'm not going to think twice about it. It's like everyone has superpowers. Like, I want this letter to go to this person, so I'm just going to hold it in my hand and, like, fling it in their general direction, and then, <laughs> yeah. you know, the computer knows who to send that to. Or, yeah, uh, exactly. I'm really running late to work. Let me just be there now. Like, let me just turn into the flash for a second, and I'm at work. <laughs> That'd be pretty yeah. sweet. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Well, Robbie, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, you've been a, a terrific guest. Hey, thanks. Appreciate you inviting me on here. This was, yeah. uh... It's pretty fun. It's good to break out of the monotony of, of life and <laughs> think about something that you just hope will come to fruition if Nintendo ever listens to you. <laughs> yeah. It's so fun to to be able to be creative like with a purpose, even if it's, you know, not gonna like get you money or uh, it's not gonna actually happen. It's fun to you get know. into get into the design mode, like, okay, we're making this thing happen. What's it gonna be like? Yeah, totally. Excellent. Good stuff. Awesome. Uh yeah, thank you for your time. Is there uh Anything you want to tell people to do? Do you have like a website you want to promote or Instagram page, anything like that? Uh, nah, not like for me personally. I'm cool. I'm probably a relatively boring person, uh, <laughs> despite my really fun job. So yeah, just uh, check out Toy Joy if you're ever in Austin. Uh, follow us on Instagram. Uh, it's a uh, Instagram at symbol guy Toy Joy Austin and uh, Toy Joy Austin on Snapchat. Uh, you can watch all the silly goofy hijinks that me and my staff get into. 
yeah cool awesome thank you very much for your time uh it's been nice nice talking to you man you too take care man yeah appreciate you Thank you for listening to episode two of Amusement Sparks. Episode three is going to be coming out December 19th, and it's about Indiana Jones. If you'd like to join our conversation online about Amusement Sparks, you can find us on Reddit. We have our own subreddit, r slash Amusement Sparks, one word. And Amusement Sparks is also on Facebook. I will be posting this week a big list, both on Reddit and on Facebook, of ideas and themes for future episodes. If you have any ideas for future themes, please feel free to contribute them. Um, One of the most beautiful things about podcasts is that they're so interactive. If you comment on one episode, you know, results can be seen on the very next episode, which is a pretty cool thing. It's almost like a a democratic medium. I love it. So, um, yeah, please feel free to join the conversation. Um, Make your voice heard. I really appreciate that and want this to be more of a community thing instead of just me doing stuff by myself, you know? Um, Cool. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you uh, on the 19th.